This video is made possible by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Plenty of ships have sails, but you'll never find them on a cargo ship, which is strange because with the environmental benefits and cost savings from reduced fuel consumption, you'd have thought they would have been implemented ages ago. You see, cargo ships are designed to carry goods from A to B, which of course means you need to get the cargo on and off. The quicker you do that, the more trips you can make and the more money you'll make. If you were to fit masts, rigging and sails covering the entire deck, you'd just make everything take longer, costing you an awful lot in lost revenue. Not to mention the reduced cargo carrying capacity, increased costs for fitting and maintaining sailing equipment, training the crew and the arguments about who would actually pay for it. Despite all of that though, technology is advancing so you can now find cargo ships with wind propulsion systems fitted, but they're not sails in the traditional sense. In the past, before steam power came along, all ships would use sails for propulsion. It was the only technology available, so they didn't really have a choice. You can't row across the Atlantic. Well, you can, but you know what I mean. Ships would sail south, near to the equator, where they could pick up the trade winds. These are predictable equatorial winds blowing westward, ideal for crossing an ocean. To go the other way, they'd just head further north and pick up the trade winds in the other direction. Of course, as soon as steam power was developed, ships could then take a far more direct route, cutting hundreds if not thousands of miles off each passage. Naturally, it quickly caught on and along came the golden age of the ocean liners that could happily steam west at much higher latitudes, straight into the wind. If you jump further ahead in time, steam power gave way to internal combustion and the fuel source changed from coal to oil. That brings us to the present day where we know the price of oil has gone up and we're all far more aware of its environmental costs. So why not go back in time and use sails again as a supplement to the main engine? I mean, plenty of vessels use them now as it is, even some cruise ships. They all work in the same way. You have a mast supported by rigging which holds up a fabric sail. As the wind blows across the sail, it gets deflected astern, resulting in the vessel being propelled ahead. By adjusting the shape of the sail using the sheets, you're able to create propulsion with the wind in almost any direction. But here's the thing, none of those vessels need to worry about loading cargo. We said at the beginning that cargo ships need deck space, both for carrying deck cargo and for access to their holds. So that rules out a traditional rig, but how's about a modern alternative? One such option is known as a sky sail. It's basically just a big kite that's designed to catch the wind at higher altitudes and help to pull the ship forwards. In tests, long-term fuel savings of 5-10% to are possible, but there are some limitations. It's a bit cumbersome and if the wind suddenly dropped, you might risk losing it. Its operational parameters can be quite limited. Another option is to use aerofoils to generate lift and propel the ship forwards. One company is proposing to make inflatable wings rather than sails. When inflated, you angle them so that the wind blows across them just like it does on an aircraft wing. The faster moving air on one side generates a low pressure area, sucking the wing and the ship towards it. But if we're going down the line of aerodynamics, rather than catching the wind, an even simpler solution might be Fletner rotors. They use the Magnus effect to generate a force instead, in the same way that you curl a football by giving it a spin. When you place a circular shape in an airstream, the air will just pass straight around it. If you rotate that shape though, the air gets deflected so that it is no longer passing uniformly across the surface. Our friend Newton tells us that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If our action is to deflect the air in one direction, the reaction is that the circular shape experiences an equal and opposite force moving it in the other direction. On a ship, we can use the Magnus effect by fitting huge rotating cylinders at the edge of the deck. Fitting them here, clear of the hatches, means they won't interfere with cargo operations. You can even hinge them so that they can be lowered for the ship to pass under bridges. Surprisingly, these rotors are not a new idea. They were originally developed by Anton Fletner in the 1920s. The vessel Buckow was fitted with two of these Fletner rotors and sailed across the North Sea to Scotland in 1925. By the following year, it was renamed and sailed 6,500 nautical miles across the Atlantic to New York via South America on a passage that would normally consume about 45 tonnes of fuel. Due to the rotor sails, it only actually consumed 12 tonnes, a massive saving from what was expected. Of course, by then it was the late 1920s and the Great Depression struck, demand for ships dropped and machinery costs reduced, meaning Fletner rotors were kind of abandoned until now. 
We are again looking for ways to reduce fuel consumption, weighing up the pros and cons of different options. With Fletner rotors, a huge advantage is that they're incredibly simple to operate and maintain. They have a control panel fitted on the bridge which simply controls the speed and direction of rotation, depending on the wind direction. But, as with all the technologies we've mentioned, Fletner rotors have one critical drawback. They have to be purchased by the ship's owner, but the benefits of reduced fuel consumption are felt by the charterer. It's a bit like insulation in a rental house. Despite its environmental and cost benefits, it's the landlord who pays for the installation, but it's the tenant that benefits from reduced bills. With ships, any costs paid by the ship's owner really need to be passed on to the charterer in the form of higher charter rates. You might be able to increase your rate enough to recoup your initial investment, but it's unlikely you're going to make a decent return. The only way technologies like this are going to be adopted in a more widespread way is through regulation. But this is where worldwide regulation of the shipping industry comes in. Remember my video about laws in international waters? Essentially, if one country makes a rule that says ships have to have a wind propulsion device fitted, owners will just flag their ships in a country that doesn't have that rule. The only way a rule will stick is if it's made internationally through the United Nations. Until then, we're left watching experiments by owner-operated vessels. This just means that the operating company actually owns the ship rather than charters it. These owners are willing to pay to experiment with new technologies because they're the ones that directly benefit from them. They've tried kites, mechanical sails and Fletner rotors, so we know the technology works. Now, it's simply a matter of economics as to when they'll catch on. Talking of economics, the reason I can now afford to bring you fresh content twice per month is thanks to the support of sponsors like Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows you to build a beautiful online presence to run your business. The big advantage of a platform like Squarespace is simplicity and speed. It took me less than one hour to get this site up and running thanks to their templates and intuitive page builder. Of course, I've included social media with links to my YouTube channel and a gallery view of some of my most relevant videos, but Squarespace is capable of so much more. You might want to use some of their other features such as membership areas, email campaigns, donations, or even just the blogging tools and powerful analytics. Simply select a template that vaguely resembles what you need and then customise it as you wish. It's really simple to add new elements or pages like these contact forms, galleries or appointments. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com nav to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.